Welcome to Ray Whitby Creations, where I create things. And in this video, I'm creating things from wood turning and laser cutting. So stay tuned and find out how to boost your wood turning craft to the next level. Auteur offered me their YIR 2.0 rotary roller system after I published a review of laser cutting of real wood using a Niji based system. The rollers integrate well with the Niji 3 Max, but I strongly recommend you follow some instructional videos to set up the rotary system if you've never used one before. And if you own a Niji 3 system and you want to know how to integrate the Auto rotary rollers, then put a comment down below and I'll do what I can to help. Neither Auto or Niji pay me for this video, so it's going to be an honest review, but I think you're going to like it. In fact, I hope very much you're going to like it. I custom 3D printed this cradle just to enable better alignment of the Auteur system. Then I hope we can get on with the rotary laser cutting and see how it may benefit wood turners. But before we can start cutting things, we're going to need things to cut. Back to the workshop. I would turned a lot of cylinder blanks for this project, as you can see in the background. And perhaps this could turn into a nice little learner supplying hollow wooden cylinders to rotary laser cutterers. 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 I knew it would take time to learn the system and get it dialed in to the existing laser module. And basically I'm just going to go and mainly use scrap spruce, which turned out to have a really nice finish. The main thing when working with scrap spruce is to cut slightly larger than the needed size and either seal the piece or sand it down to your final size. And if you've got a lot of time to spend, sanding it methodically will turn it into something that's really super smooth. For use on the auto rotary rollers, these cylinders must be as consistent as possible in the diameter along their lengths. The thickness chosen for the walls will be critical, but it will depend on the type of wood you're using and the type of laser module you have. So knowing the capability of your laser module when it's cutting wood is going to be vitally important. You've got to do this before you even attempt to use the rotary roller. I did some cutting tests in a previous video using the Niji E40 laser module, and it's definitely worth checking out that project. And I'm looking forward to Niji releasing their E80 laser module over Christmas 2022. Which reminds me, why is 10 plus 10 the same as 11 plus 11? Because 10 plus 10 equals 20, and 11 plus 11 equals 20, too. Image engraving onto cylinders has been done many times before, so really this is just ensuring that the system is running as it should be. Can anyone guess what the scene is from? Pause the video and write it down in the comments below. I'm going to cut some patterns that form a continuous loop around the cylinder. In Lightburner, put a horizontal line at the midpoint of the cutting area, then draw a box which has the same length as the circumference of the cylinder. I use L-shaped marks to test the image height matches the circumference, so it's best to ensure to have some sacrificial blank space on your cylinder. The marks are showing to be a couple of millimetres out, so in Lightburn's rotary setup, you can adjust the millimetre per rotation to bring these marks back into alignment. You can then run the alignment test again and further adjust this until the marks meet. I imported a pattern and adjusted its length to fit the box, such that the pattern length is the same as the circumference of the cylinder. Then it's just a case of positioning it precisely into the box. Of course, it's wise to check that the pattern does repeat itself before trying to burn or cut it with a laser. Lightburn has a trace function as I only want to cut the outlines of this pattern. So once the trace is generated, the main image can be ignored. To check that the pattern does align around the cylinder, 
I ungroup the trace lines and select two small parts that cross over the top and bottom of the box. I set the run for a low power burn. The laser will then engrave at the top and then the bottom of the pattern on the cylinder. And that should be continuous on the actual cylinder. Assuming that the auto rotary rollers are properly set up. You can see that the overlap of these two sections is pretty good, only a minor deviation, and that's likely down to the pattern that I generated rather than the auto rotary roller system. With that done, it's time to hit it with a lot more power and start cutting this pattern out. For the actual cutting, I use 200 millimeters per minute, 85% power, air assist, constant power mode on, and two passes. Now you have to be careful with the design, such that the pieces that you're cutting do not fall out and interfere with the rollers, and then somehow dislodge the cylinder. I think this is potentially one of the main drawbacks to using rotary rollers. However, with this design the pieces didn't fall out. In fact, it became a real pain trying to remove the pieces after the final cuts. There was some pattern misalignment, which, as I said, is probably likely due to the design of the image causing the issues. So, so far, the auto rotary rollers have worked well for laser cutting hollowed cylinders. Now I can just trim up the exposed end and then start pushing out all the pieces. Hopefully this will give you an idea of what can be done using this method. Perhaps turning out some more interesting tea light holders, obviously with RGB tea lights and not actual tea lights. I had another pattern in mind that contained a spiral ribbon and inset that with a couple of logos. You can see I'm using a wooden stick suspended into the cylinder and this was to stop scorching on the internal surfaces. The run was going well until one of the pieces fell out and jammed the cylinder against the rollers. It took a little while to get the piece removed, then repositioned the cylinder as carefully as I could, and then resumed the run. Although I've not shown it here, I do have ventilation above the laser bed. Alas, it's not as powerful as I need it. Um, but I'm wearing a face mask with decent filters to cope with the laser exhaust fumes, which I'm going to be exposed to whilst filming for this video. The final effect was pretty awful. I think because of having moved the cylinder during the cutting run, I misaligned it and that caused a lot of the issues. So the continuous areas were a long way out and some of the cut lines had strayed. This was all down to the design rather than the rollers. But in the end, I had created a wooden spring. I decided to repeat the cut, but only after I had jiggled with the pattern a little bit, and then decided to use an oak hollow cylinder. The results were far better. Not because of the wood, but I think probably because of the design having proper reinforcements of the spiral ribbon. However, some of the spiral lines were not properly aligned. I had run the cut with two passes, but in some areas it wasn't enough, so I tried to do a third pass before I had touched the cylinder and removed it from the rollers, and this I think ran into some problems. The auto rotary rollers hadn't put the piece back into position correctly when moving from the top of the image to a location further down. But whatever the issue may be, it strikes me that a chuck-based system would be a lot more reliable. And for wood turners, we certainly like to use chucks. I have since found out that Auto do have a chuck-based rotary system in their product lineup, and I need to get my hands on one. These are test segments left over from turning the pattern plywood torus, and they were very useful to try and turn a segmented ring. I won't go into too much detail about the wood turning of this ring, only that it was mounted onto a tenon, 
turn, sanded, cut and sanded again. The thickness of the cylinder wall was around 5mm and I do need to do some more testing to see how well the system could cut thicker cylinders. As long as the final cut pieces are small, they should be easy to remove. Because of the nature of the spruce, cutting it on the lathe just caused a lot of tear out, so running it through a bandsaw was far easier. And no, my fingers were not close to the bandsaw blade. Please, you've got to believe me. For the next rotary laser cut, I borrowed an idea from Olivia Gomez, and you can see his video in the link. But this is a simple segmented ring, although you'd have to look fairly carefully to see the segmented pieces. Because it's narrow and lightweight, it would not stand up, and certainly not stand true on the rotary rollers. So I came up with this idea to hot glue it to a sturdy cylinder of almost the exact same diameter. Well, it's probably one or two millimeters larger. Once the glue had cooled, I set up to run a cut of black speech text. You can see that I initially forgot the sacrificial rod to protect the inside of the ring, because after all, it is precious to me. Unfortunately, I hadn't modified the image file with enough tabs, so larger pieces of the text were cut out or just simply fell out. Now this was definitely down to me and probably should have worked on a larger ring with larger text next time. And for those that are wondering why I cut the text out and not simply laser engraved the text instead, well, the text could actually be filled with resin or as I tried to place a light inside. You see, not all art or craft needs to have an everyday functional use. Art in itself can be a great use to somebody through art therapy. Now it's not yet glowing and it hasn't shrunk in size and I take that as a good thing. So these are the completed and intact test pieces and I hope it has inspired some ideas. I think the Auteur rotary rollers are a good system to use, though I would like to compare them with the chuck base system. There was an issue with the alignment when moving large distances across the design, but there's probably a way to use the target position functionality of Lightburn to compensate. This is a wonderful little system, and I think a must-have for any woodturner that has a laser, and I think it's a real bargain for something that's exceptionally useful. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought or have ideas for future work in this area. Oh, and by the way, did you guess that this engraving was the Truman Show? Well done you.